Tong Fu's turn to ban. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Feng Young Dota 2 Battle. This is game two of a best of three between Five Speed Gaming and Tongfu for the round of eight of the competition. I'm Basekip here providing coverage on behalf of Beyond the Summit, and hopefully I have sorted out at least some of the lag issues. Apologies about game one uh, again, guys, but everything is very short Tong notice, um, and everything is a little bit yeah, everything's a little bit sketch right now. But we're back. Uh, Speed Gaming are currently leading 1-0 in this best of three. It's all, well, a fairly farmy game one, honestly. Speed Gaming got off to a pretty early lead with some really nice smoke movements, uh, along seconds. with some really nice Moonlight Shadow play, and from there, sat on their comfortable lead, Five starved out Tong Fu, remain. and managed to finish off the game. So we're going to see if Tong Fu maybe has something else in store for game two. What they do have in store is Zhou is going to be drafting this time around instead of Moose. So Tong Fu seemingly, after each loss, are switching back and forth the captaincy to try and mix things up. Hi, Lai Dai uh, is still, of course, drafting for speed gaming. Dire team ban. So Tong Fu going to start us off with a ban on Odie and Chen. Speed gaming again, remove this alchemist. And it looks like it's going to be another game where a lot of top picks uh, are going to end up making it through. The bristleback was pretty much completely ignored last Ten game. Um, hmm, what else have we seen? Tong Fu, I wouldn't say that necessarily any of their signatures weren't there. The Chen was banned out, so uh, wasn't available for the SMJ, but just going to end up being the Visage ban for speed. Tong so Fu's turn they value it really highly in terms of playing it themselves, but also going to value it pretty highly uh, in terms of getting rid of it for Tong Fu. So we'll see maybe the clockwork again for Kabu. The one downside for that, of course, for Tong Fu is that, yeah, you would have to give away Rubik. So Tong Fu actually just going to pick up the Rubik and uh, call it a day. I'm a little bit surprised. A couple of, if you asked me a week, two weeks ago, what my stance on Rubik was, uh, I would say that he's not, he wasn't really the best, you know, he wasn't a premium support for the current metagame, but I guess with other supports being bumped down a little bit, like Crystal Maiden and Visage and things like that, Rubik is uh, seeing a little bit of a resurgence in terms of popularity. He is, he is still a fairly low damage support and his move speed is still Five pretty bad, remaining. but I guess, again, and I said this in a broadcast, you know, a couple of days ago, that Dial when every support is pretty much at the same level, well, every support player really likes playing Rubik. And there is, of course, the opportunity to make some pretty big plays. So, Speed Gaming, they're going to be picking up Nyx Assassin and Crystal Maiden. Uh, I'm anticipating that it's going to be the offlane Nyx handled by Bone. Crystal Maiden probably, you know, doing what we're used to, half jungling, roaming around a little bit early on. So Speed Gaming, very pick-off oriented lineup so far. I would be extremely surprised to see Sing Sing's Murata make it through into the next round, so probably going to have to see him on something a little bit different this game, and Tong Fu are going to end up going back for Ten the clockwork. Seconds remaining. Dire team ban. And yeah, Sing Sing's Marana is going to be pretty much immediately banned out. So speed gaming, what are they worried about? Maybe they'll just get rid of the... Okay, they are going to get rid of Mood Storm Spirit uh, this time around. Tongfu could still go anywhere that they want with this lineup, honestly. Nothing is set of stone. They don't necessarily have the best 1v1s, but I think they've already got a... Sus no, okay, maybe they don't have a suspicion that the Nyx Assassin is offlane. From what I've seen of speed, whenever they pick Nyx, it is the offlane Nyx uh, from Bone. That could have changed maybe a little bit recently. Maybe they, they are playing it as a support, but Tongfu actually end up remaining. getting rid of the Elder Titan. I guess speed did run... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, remaining. I might be wrong. Um, they did run the Elder Titan mid a little bit during MLG, so maybe that that's the, the thought here for Tongfu. The, for the most part, we do pretty much just see him Dying on the offlane in the, in the eastern scene these days. And Speed Gaming also just going to get rid of the Lifestealer uh, this time around. So as far as carries are concerned, what have we still got? There's still the Gyrocopter, uh, there's still Weaver, so there's still plenty of your premium ranged carries. Um, neither team has a particularly weak tri lane so far. Crystal Maiden and Rubik pretty much the only heroes there at the moment, though it looks like Tongfu might think that the, the Nyx Assassin Ten is a support, or perhaps a mid. 
Uh, and mid lane is still wide open Five right now. Yes, OD has been banned. Yes, Marana's been banned. Uh, yes, Storm Spirit's been banned. But Speed Gaming actually going to go for a fairly early Lashrak pickup here. So maybe moving in towards a bit of a pushy style. Uh, if Tongfu want the Luna, then I think they need to take it away from Speed Gaming right now. Otherwise, uh, Speed are just going to end up going, probably end up going for it and then just take that tier one tower uh, on the safe lane probably before five minutes. And it is a pretty common carry pickup uh, for remaining. Envy as well. And given that they've got the Nyx Assassin on the off lane, uh, we're probably we're maybe looking at a semi carry for mid like a TA uh, and then something like the Luna for for your safe lane Reserve farmer. Time. Does seem like the stream is behaving a little bit better now, guys. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it stays that way. Uh, I'll let you know if anything changes. But for now, if you're getting any lag issues, uh, then it's on your own. The quality isn't going to be the best, but hopefully it's it's stable. Oh, and for anybody wondering what the schedule is for later today, if this best of three ends here, uh, then the next best of three is going to be IG versus Titan, which isn't going to be played until... Uh, 2030 SGT, so that's like seven hours from now, pretty much. So I think they just had to work out the schedule for when the teams were available uh, to play, just because, of course, the servers were down yesterday. But Tongfu sitting around scratching their heads a little bit, chewing into their reserve time. Uh, only 40 seconds left, and they actually end up going for the Disruptors. So maybe this is this could be a tiny bit of motivation for Speed Gaming to go for an aggressive tri lane. Uh, again, touched on in the last game, the Disruptor is all right, tri lane versus tri lane now, but still not the best. And Speed Gaming actually going to end up going for the Spectre. So it looks like we're going to see some Nyx Assassin Spectre action. I'm hoping that the Spectre. Well, okay, knowing Envy's playstyle, I'm expecting the Spectre to be a to be pretty active early to mid game. The Nyx Assassin finds somebody. Spectre is going to buy maybe phase drum. So Nyx Assassin finds somebody, jumps them, Spectre haunts in, pick up the kill, get some extra farm for the spec, and then spec and sort of go remaining. back to farming. It could, of course, be, you know, kind of an AFK farm Spectre, Five but um, I, I don't think that's really the best way to play the hero these days, honestly. So we'll, we'll see what ends up happening Reserve this time around. Time. Uh, it is going to be the job of the Nyx Assassin, at the very least, to create quite a bit of space. So we'll, we'll see how Bone does, but generally does quite well. Uh, on its offlane Dyer mix. And Tongfu back. just going to pick up the Dragon Knight. Um, hmm. So maybe, I guess maybe we see something like a Luna Band this time around from Speed. Still looking for the mid. Um, I feel that TA is maybe still Ten a strong option. Remaining. Does pretty well against Dragon Knight. The Dragon Knight pickup for Tongfu is fairly Five safe because there remaining. aren't a lot of heroes that he gets absolutely crushed by. But I'm expecting Speed to still pick up Reserve something pretty time. strong like that TA, and then expect the Crystal Maiden and the Lashrak to be roaming in over towards mid pretty actively. Tong Fu's and actually going to end up being the Gyrocopter band out uh, by speed. And, ah, okay, Tong Fu get rid of the Kanka. I guess another one of Sing Sing's signatures could, well, does synergize pretty well with the Spectre. Uh, with the Coco's rum, but not sure if they necessarily would have would have taken it here. But Speed Gaming have all the time in the world. If they were thinking of the Spectre, they're thinking of the Kanka just to pick up something else here. They've still got another minute and 50 seconds remaining. Seconds remaining. Uh, we'll see what they go for. Tongfu, still a pretty comfortable 30 seconds of bonus time left. Five but seconds what remaining. are we looking at here? There's, again, still a lot of your premium ranged carries. There's still the Weaver. Uh, there's still Reserve the Luna left time. in the pool. Oh, and for anybody just tuning in, this is Game 2. Uh, this best of three in Speed Gaming are currently leading 1-0. It's a pretty important series for both teams because there isn't a lower bracket until you get to the semifinals. And that's not really a lower bracket, that's just the... Um, just That's just effectively third, fourth place decider, I think. I don't think you actually bounce back uh, and then head into the finals. I would have to double check, however. Yeah, it's just the third place deciders. It's actually just single elimination all the way through. Though, if you get to the semis, then you have a chance to lose and still win some prize money, though. 
the third place prize is not that impressive. It's 820 for third, uh, around 2.5k for second, and then around 9.8k for first. So, bit of a discrepancy between between third and first there, and I, I believe that's approxim that's the approximation uh, in USD. And speed, actually, quite a bit of discussion going on as to what they want this last pick to be. That, uh, or they're just discussing lanes, discussing trial options, where they want to roam early on, maybe where they want to ward, uh, or maybe somebody is just off getting a drink, so they're they're dragging the time out. But Ten seconds we'll remaining. see what they end up going for in just a moment. Invoker. And it's actually going to be Invoker. Okay, nice. So I always love casting Invoker. It's always fun to watch. Uh, should do all right against the Dragon Knight as well. And gives them another hero that the Nyx Assassin can set up for. So Nyx finds somebody, you stun him, you sunstrike him. Um, and that's that's pretty much how it goes. Maybe the Spectre haunts him as well, uh, if it's 100% necessary. So Tongfu, what are they going to go for here? Ten seconds uh, remaining. I would expect maybe just your first item BKB Five carry, though. Weaver starts to look a little bit less appealing here. Reserve so time. I guess we'll have to see. I think it's still a really solid idea just to go for the Luna, the Luna Dragon Knight, try and get those tier ones down pretty quickly, restrict the Spectre's map control fairly early on, just because the Invoker and the Spectre are going to sit around and, and try and grab a little bit of farm. And okay. Tong Fu going to end up going for the Necrophos here. I'm... A big fan of Necrolite, or Necrophos, but I don't know if it's the best hero this game. Necrolite is typically an ideal last pick when the enemy team doesn't have a bunch of AoE stuns uh, and doesn't have a bunch of AoE damage, just so that you can turn any every team fight into a death ball. Everybody just sticks right on top of the Necro, and that's pretty much your game plan. We've seen it used to great success against Bristleback strategies recently, things like that. But I don't think Tongfu have the opportunity to group up in these team fights to, to get the full effect out of the Necro. There's an Impale, uh, there's all of Crystal Maiden's AoE, all of Lishrak's AoE, all of Invoker's AoE. Um, Ten seconds remaining. So Tongfu have to get things going really early, otherwise Five this could get remaining. very ugly very, very quickly. They, I, th I think they need a huge lead. They're probably going to get maybe the fast mech up on the, the Necrolite and then just call it a day and go. I wouldn't even be too surprised to see Clockwork maybe working towards a pipe if they really want to get the full strength out of the hero. But guys, welcome back. It's game two of this best of three, Tongfu versus Speed. And let's, well, after everybody's picked up their heroes, we'll be able to run over uh, who is playing what. So it is going to be Sing Sing over on the Invoker. Pylai Dai is going to be handling the Crystal Maiden, AUI 2000 on the Lashrak, and that's going to leave Bone 7 to handle the Nyx Assassin and Envy. Uh, is going to be on your Spectre. Meanwhile, over on Tongfu, we've got Sancheng on the Disruptor. Mu will be your Dragonite. Zhou on the Necrophos. Uh, and we'll have to see who between the SMJ uh, and Kabu is playing. Oh, well, duh. Kabu is going to be on Clockwork, and the SMJ is going to be on the Rubik. So I haven't seen Sing Sing's Invoker before, but I'm pretty excited. So we'll see how this goes. He should have a fairly easy time against the Dragon Knight on mid. So I guess that's the one. That's the one big crux for Invoker, whether or not he does fairly well for the for the early levels. But I, I think he should be fine here. Tongfu don't even necessarily have the best supports to try and roam on him uh, and do anything. Maybe a nice glimpse back could could secure a kill after a lift. But in general. Rubik and Disruptor do not have uh, a whole lot of damage to contribute to a gank. So just waiting everybody to take up their heroes right now. And we'll be able to get underway. Maybe I'll do a very quick ping check, but everybody's in China, so everybody's on dead on 100 ping. So nothing too interesting going on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sold on this Necro pick. It could work out. Tongfu could get a lot of momentum really early on. Uh, and just go before the Spectre or the Invoker are relevant at all. But if they stall, the Nyx Assassin... If this goes past 30 minutes, the Nyx Assassin is going to destroy the Necrolite in every fight. And 
if the Spectre and the Invoker manage to get any semblance of farm whatsoever, then I don't know how Tongfu are going to be able to group up and, and really get the power out of the Necro. So, I guess the Reaper Scythe is nice to drop the Spectre, but that's probably, probably about it. So, a little, little bit of pinging going out. Speed gaming, just starting things off pretty defensively. Sing Sing, actually the first point up in the Quaz, who's been... He's picked up an ult talisman, been pulled a little bit of regen. Um, so he's not going for the Honey Voker, and we'll see. He might even end up going for Quaz Wex here. Uh, I would say that Quaz Exord is the most typical build these days, but maybe Sing Sing breaking the mold uh, a little bit. So to mention what Honey Voker is, and I guess talk a little bit about how it differs. So Honey Voker is normally, he starts off with a Ringer Protection and a Mantle and a little bit of regen, and then he pretty much immediately rushes a Null Talisman um, and a Bassy, and the, he just leaves the Bassy on, especially against a laner like Dragon Knight, who's really heavily pushing the wave into the tower. Just a little bit of extra armor on your creeps helps to keep the lane out, uh, and the plus six damage for free and then the extra damage from the Null Talisman as well actually help buff up Invoker's absolutely awful early damage. So we'll see how Sing Sing does in terms of farm. He shouldn't have too much trouble uh, against the Dragon Knight, however, but... Did SMJ already an invis picked up, and let's see if Tongfu are going to be able to make a play here. Sunshine just waiting up on the hill as well. Needs to make sure that he isn't spotted. They're going to come down out of the fog. They get some auto attacks. They get the lift. That's all they've got for disable. The creeps manage to block things a little bit, and Mu with the dragon tail won't be able to pick up the first blood. That's actually going to go to Sunshine, but Sing Sing already not having the best time, and it's going to have to wait a few seconds to buy a TP scroll uh, and head towards mid. So he's probably unimpressed about being ganked like that, but shouldn't impact the course of his game too much. Uh, Bone 7 just playing his normal off lane assassin with this poor man shield. Should be able to do alright. I think we've still got one ward in the inventories of each team's supports. Ah uh, no, actually we've got a lane ward up here on the top side for speed. Very defensively placed, I might add, but I guess just hoping to keep things pulled under the tower and get EE some safe farm. Sing Sing focusing on harassing for the time being. He's 3 0 up against the 5 0 of the Dragon Knight, so already pulling back to about where he should be. And Zhou, well, he's got a Ringer Protection up, so it looks like Tong Fu may be considering going for this tier 1 tower fairly early on. Again, I think the, the clock, the onus is 100%. On Tongfu, and that's not a bad pun that they have clockwork. They do need to be moving earlier, early aggressively, keep the Invoker and the Spectre down if at all possible, and just don't let Bone Seven make space. Bone wants to be careful about not being lifted up onto a hill here, so just gonna run in, try to steal some experience, pop the Carapace, uh, and then walk away. Two minute rune's gonna be camped by the supports, but it's gonna be a regen. Spawning up in the top side, and despite being ganked at level 1, Sing Sing is doing just fine. And he's actually going Quaz Wex this game, so... Uh, looks like speed... Oh, that was... That was an unfortunate regen, but... Looks like speed playing this a little bit more traditionally. They're having the Invoker in sort of a stalling build with Quaz Wex, which is very difficult to push into, and... Uh, just relying on the Spectre as 100% pretty much of their... of their carry power. So, we'll see how that works out for them. I was expecting to see Quaz Exorp, but I think this works out fine, and if you burn the Necrolite's mana, then his team is his team is in trouble. Yeah, turns out I had the camera down a couple of notches, guys. Uh, sorry about that, that was a bit, a bit strange of me. Someone, someone just dropped me a message about it. Kabu just blocking creeps, gonna try and pull things out. Uh, speed gaming of just being doing a little bit of jungling, running some pulls through. Pylai dies, managed to reach level two so far. Haven't seen any moves from speed uh, to head towards the mid lane and try and do anything. Pylai die, not looking for an oh poor guy. <laughs> Clarity gets cancelled, but um, not looking for an early gank or anything like that. Just picking up the point in Arcane Aura and kind of calling it a day uh, and just jungle farming for the time being. Again, I think speed don't need to do too much to win this game. Just hold onto their towers, get farm in the Spectre and. It should hopefully be enough. So I guess the one thing to keep in mind is that the Spectre does need to get a lot of farm. If the Necrolite gets big, he's just going to drop the Spectre every fight. Because heading towards the late game, she's... Go well, not well, heading towards the mid game before the Invoker starts getting, you know, past level 18 around then. He is going to be pretty much the only source of damage. And 
Sing Sing, interestingly enough, actually going to pick up a point in Exhort as well. So he's 1-1-1, one, 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 and I guess he's just keeping his build. You know, he's 2-1-1 one, one, and just kind of keeping his build open for the time being. Foreman Urn's going to spawn. Pylai Die will be able to snag that. Bone, many, many realizing more. that he's not getting that much on bottom lane, is actually going to swing over towards mid. He gets spotted. Looks like Pylai Die actually wanted to move in for a gank there, but... I don't know if that's going to be successful after Mu just saw the Nyx Assassin, and they also saw the Crystal Maiden picking up the rune. So, yeah, Pylai Die probably not going to accomplish too much here. Yeah, e missed a couple of creeps up on top lane. Joe sitting at 30. Down on bot. And Pylai Die still really wants this kill, but it's just not happening at the moment. And I don't think Sing Sing is too impressed with all of these heroes chilling out mid lane and uh, stealing his experience, but looks like Bone7 doesn't really have too much better to do right now. He's going to be able to pick up his boots, but that's about, that's about it for the time being. And Tongfu, since nobody is home bottom lane, they're going to turn the Bassy on and they're just going to go straight in for a push. Uh, no casual point in Heartstopper Aura just yet for Zhou, but wasn't playing a 1v1, so no big surprises there. And bone, well, bone spots that there's experience to be had bottom lane, so he's gonna quite happily move in and suck that up. Uh, and even an early TP making its way down from AUI, so I think speed gaming, they know what their game plan is here. It's just stall towers, make space for NB to farm, and have that be that. EE going for a pretty interesting early game build. He's got an orb of venom picked up and a poor man shield, so does want to at least have the pressure to force his lane opponent out. Uh, something doesn't end up happening. They're gonna have the haunt going for bottom lane, mid lane gank as well. Snap up onto Moo. The bite goes out as well, but he gets the dragon tail onto Envy. Is that gonna be long enough for any TPs to land? Not quite. Dragon Knight just a little bit too tanky to bring down there. And uh, the burst damage from this invoker build, well, while cold snap is good, that's pretty <laughs> much it. Uh, also, Radiance Courier is gonna end up dying somewhere in the the middle of all of this. So. That's, a, that's another speed gaming courier kill, but Envy has to walk back to base, so a little bit of extra Dyer's farm missed for him, they didn't manage to grab the kill. And Nyx Assassin, still only level 3, almost level 4, down on bottom lane. But Tongfu pick up the tower, last hit goes to the Necro, 1400 gold up in the bank. But they, I don't think Tongfu can, they can't let this stall here, they need to continue bringing down these tier 1s. Um, continue 5 manning if at all possible. Just going to be some phase boots up for Envy. So. Again, no big surprises. Expecting him to probably just go phase drum, dull phase drum defusal. Maybe he looks to go like phase drum vip booster radiance if things are going alright. But uh, I don't think a little bit of extra. I don't think extra mana burn would go amiss here against Tongfu's lineup. AUI heads top, threatens the stun, Kabu gonna get stunned up, looks like Speed Gaming should be able to pick up a very straightforward kill. Moo comes in, Envy is down underneath the map right now, and Priest Fire is actually gonna be able to finish him off. Nice little turnaround for Tongfu, uh, and managed to bring down Envy. So Envy's stall, the Envy's farm has really stalled, 37 creeps to compare to the 51 uh, over on the Necrolite who's just rushing up this mech immediately. Pylai Die gonna take this Radiance an opportunity to push in mid a little bit, Bone7 moves in from the side, level four and a half right now, so making reasonable progress towards that level six, though. Moo swings down river, Kabu gets bitten up, there's a snap ready as well, but Speed Gaming decide better of the dive here, Kabu still got the cogs, Bone gets locked in, and he might just die here. Sing Sing's gonna walk around, eat some tower shots, the snap goes, Sancheng walks in, Couple more right clicks, gonna finish off Bone. The Crystal Maiden's already dead from the wraparound from Moo and ZSMJ. And Speed Gaming kind of get baited into their own death by Bone, Bone 7's positioning there. There is gonna be a haunt popping, and they do bring down Sancheng with the illusion, but still a lot of momentum in favor of Tonk for right now. They don't have the Dragon Form up for 45 seconds, won't be able to push this tier 1 for a bit. Joe still farming on bottom lane. Top tower is under uh, the attack. mech is finished now, however, so this should be Tongfu's timing to get moving and, and start doing stuff. Sing Sing, what's he got? Has managed to pick up a Midas. He's actually going back for just Quas Exort here. So I thought it was going to be Quas Wex, but 
no, never mind. Still just, still just playing the the standard build at the moment. I think there's still an argument to be made for Coswex in that you could. It's great for just defending pushes and stalling the game out, but uh, it looks like Speed want a little bit more damage for the mid game. And Moo has a haste, so that's probably a free kill. Bone, can you get level six bottom lane? Probably another well, smoke from Speed Gaming as well. Uh, Dragon Tail goes out onto Pylai Die after the haste. A couple more right clicks finish him off. Hookshot flies in. Kabu ends up sticking on to the uh, Forge Spirit, however. Sunstrike coming in. AUI right click to death. Sunstrike not going to connect. It ends up being a double kill for Mu. Finds Sing Sing up on the high ground as well. Doesn't have a lot of mana, but he's still got most of this haste. Earn charge used as well. Sing Sing trying to escape, but gets brought down by the Breach Fire. Triple kill. And a mega kill streak for Moo. Spots the Crystal Maiden TPing in. But Haste is just gonna fade. Won't be able to grab that one. But Tongfu really rolling. Zhou gonna join this fight mid as well. Pop off the mech. Get the heals going. Envy, what's he got top lane? 1500 gold. But tier 1 tower is already falling. 3k at the lead in favor of Tongfu along with 3k experience. And yeah, speed gaming. You gotta get something going. Bone, he's managed to grab almost level 7 on bot. They really need some pickoffs to stall this push. So far in this game, all he's done is soak up some experience, head mid, soak up some experience, dive at tier 1 mid, die, have two people come and try and save him mid. They also both died. So he's, he's got a little bit of, he's got a little bit of paying back uh, to do for his team here. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So we're 10 minutes in, it's not unreasonable for Tongfu to close this game out in 20 minutes if they really get rolling. We're going to have a Shadow Blade picked up for Mu. So I'm just going to continue looking for pickoffs, Sing Sing jungling a little bit with Alacrity, Pylai Dai and AUI. Going to make their way bot. Bone is still kind of farming away. Vision for speed gaming is very defensive. Uh, they're just keeping things up on the, just keeping an eye on things up on the top side of the map. Envy's going to back off. Just pick up the drum, he's gonna use the haunt and immediately jumps bottom lane into a dragon tail and then dies. He's got a drum, he's got face boots. That was anyone, what was that? So he was top. He popped his ultimate, I think, to see where everybody was. Then he haunted into the DK. And the DK almost solo killed him. So Envy's got a free Radiance trip back to base. Tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Oh, man. Speed Gaming gonna lose AUI bottom lane as well. Bone on the hunt. Gonna pop the Vendetta defensively as Kabu's in the neighborhood. They are gonna spot Pylai Dai throwing a crystal, throwing a freezing field down over in the trees. It's gonna make a little bit of space. Looks like Moo might be bursted by Bone. Sunstrike coming in as well from Sing Sing. Not needed. Sang Chang gonna drop the Static Storm along with the Kinetic Field. Bone heading into the trees, but he's blocked in by the Cogs, by the Battery Assault. Tedus MJ drops the Split Earth and picks up the return kill. So it ends up being one for one. Well, it ends up being one for one in the next little trade on bottom lane. AOI did, of course, go down right at the very start. AUI, just pushing in a little bit on mid lane. If you can say anything about speed gaming, they're definitely making this game pretty chaotic. Hookshot going to be attempted from Kabu, but not quite on the mark there. Sing Sing just going to keep on farming away, providing Sunstrike support from the jungle. Envy heads top, where his tier 1 tower is already gone, so all the tier 1s are down. Tongfu leading by 7 kills, 5k gold, 3k experience. And speed have a lot of items to farm. Uh, from this point. Sing Sing is just working straight towards a Force Staff. Not clear what Envy is working on just yet, whether or not it's going to be the Diffusal Blade or working on the Radiance. Uh, Zhou appears to just be working Dyer's towards a Bloodstone or an Aghanim Scepter right now. And Bone looks like it's also going to be a Force Staff for him. But we have st we're still yet to see a successful Vendetta gank. There are some sentries being popped down here and there by Tongfu, but uh, I feel like the offline Nyx Assassin isn't really making that much space, and it was the effectively the first pick uh, for speed gaming. So they're going to give away this tier 2 tower for free on mid, 
in exchange for this tier 1 tower up on top. No glyph for Tongfu, so they're not going to be able to defend this one. No TPs. Well, actually, TPs come in, and Speed Gaming just scatter Pylidai heads into the trees. So he's dead. One more right click to finish him off. They hold the tower, and Tongfu just going to keep on pushing Moose spots AUI along with Envy up on the top side. Another missed hook shot from Kabu. But a couple of right clicks and a breathe fire are going to bring down AUI. Another kill for Mu. Bottom lane, Bone and Sing Sing going to try and bring down a tier 1. This one they should be able to grab. Sing Sing snags the last hit. That as MJ walks down the haunt. Going to pop off as well. That as MJ just lifts the illusion. Envy pops in. Sing Sing going to grab that kill. Mu in some trouble, but nobody brought anti invis, so. I think Mu is going to be just fine. They're just following the trail Daya's to try and figure out where he is right now, but the dagger wears off, and away he'll go. Double damage. Okay, so speed gaming out of all of that get something. They should be able to grab this tier 1 tower top lane in a little while. Small dent in golden experience. Bone can almost pick up a four staff if he wants it. Could maybe go for a Dagon as well. Moo, Dragon Tail on Bone right in the Static Storm. Gets earned up as well, brought down by the Breathe Fire. This Shadow Blade Dragon Knight is doing work. And Moo, just in general, he's 8, 1, and 2 right now. Having an absolutely fantastic game. Highlight died. Up on top lane, Cobb is going to double damage. Going to miss another hook, but Reaper Scythe puts an end to the Crystal Maiden. Nothing that Envy can do aside from just look on. Sing Sing is going to TP in, 4 staff complete. But all he can do is pop into the jungle and farm up a little bit. Uh, though right on top of a Radiant Ward, it is worth mentioning. So, Blade Mail picked up for the Clockwork, 4 staff up for your next Assassin. AUI, not a whole lot of farm, has some Tranquil Boots and a point booster, but that's about the extent of it. Speed gaming, warding, falling a little bit by the wayside as well as they just continue to very rapidly lose map control. Do they have some wards up in inventories? Not at the moment, Pylai dies, just picked up some some sentry wards in a smoke right now. Uh. But Tongfu still on a roll. They're gonna smoke up. Joe is still top lane. He's managed to finish up his Aghanim Scepter as well at this point. They're gonna pop the haunt. Well, but not really gonna do anything. Just getting a little bit of scouting information. If, if you're on speed gaming, you just saw a whole bunch of illusions randomly pop up uh, on top of no heroes, and that's it. So it gives them some information, but it's a very expensive cooldown to be using. And just for a little bit of scouting, it looks like Envy is Dyer's going to try and dagger over top. into the Radiant Jungle and grab a little bit of farm. And that's actually what Speed Gaming are doing in general right now, moving into the Radiant Jungle to try and find farm uh, as Tong Fu just five-man top lane. Tier 2 tower, pretty much theirs for free it seems. Nobody on speed doing anything to, to deal with this push. Sing Sing just going to keep on farming and wait mid lane and looks like... Speed have decided that the only time that they're going to be able to take a fight is when they're forced to on their high ground. TPs are coming back, but Tongfu is showing no signs of stopping. Envy's got a TP, but he doesn't have a haunt ready. And yeah, they're just losing tier threes right now. Snap gonna go on Joe, but he's gonna pop some more heals, keep everybody healthy. Breathe fire cleans up the wave. EE trying to do some damage to this tier 2, but it's taking him a very long time. The tier 3 is still already falling, so the SMJ gets the steal on the Forge Spirits as well. Tier 1 is going to end up falling mid. Looks like AUI able to backdoor that one, but tier 3 is down. Nice two-man stun from Bone. Forge Spirit's going to work over on Mu. He's going to Shadow Blade his way, and they get the glimpse back. Bone still able to escape, however. Bunch of Sentry Wards being dropped by both sides, though they're all out of range of one another. Stun on Takabu, but he's already popped his Blade Mail. Dragon Tail on Bone. Can they focus him down? Not quite. Four Staff's out, but Melee Barracks down, and no punishment whatsoever on Tong Fu as they pick up an 18 minute lane of Rax. Envy is still just farming away bot. He's got 2.5k gold up in the bank. But I think at this point, I think you, I think at this point you just have to buy the Diffusal Blade uh, and take the next fight. As soon as you're down two lanes of Rax, Tongfu can just starve you out, farm Roshan, and I think kind of go from there. Sing Sing, what's he got right now? He's level 11, he's got some dust. 
but Tong Fu just continue to get further and further and further ahead. Mood's gonna have a BKB fairly soon. Envy gonna scoot his way out of the Radiant Jungle with Dagger as he heads back to the Fountain. And Bone 7 and Pylai die, move out for a smoke gank, but I feel that this is something that could have happened back when Bone first got his ultimate. It has been a hard game, uh, but Bone also has quite a bit of farm. Blink Tiger already picked up as well. Radiant's top tower is under attack. So we've got the Sunstrike Primed, we've got, has fallen. we've got Bone on the hunt. I don't know if you can kill Joe, so Bone is just gonna scoot on by. They ping him out. I don't know. He's pretty tanky. They're gonna pop the haunt, and he comes, so I'm gonna go out. Sunstrike as well. Even the freezing field used. Kabu jumps in with the blade mail, gets bitten immediately. Envy's in some trouble. Kabu gonna try and walk out. Nobody else is here. Uh, so it does take four, but speed gaming do manage to bring down. They do manage to bring down the Necrolite, but there's a glimpse back. Static Storm a little bit off the mark. They still manage to kill Envy. They lift up Bones at SMJ. While Sunshung forces himself up onto the high ground. And it ends up being two for two anyway. So nice little pick off for speed, but Tong Fu looks like they might be able to just turn this into a tower as well. A little bit of dragon form left for Mu here as well. Sunstrike attempted. A little bit off the mark. Uh, just fishing for Sunshung there. Okay, speed gaming. <laughs> They're actually defending a tower. Necrolites managed to respawn. Just picked up an ultimate orb right now. AUI, meanwhile, just kind of farming up on top lane. Another bracer added to his inventory. Highlight Eye continues to buy all the support items. And Sing Sing. Not, well, he's actually got 3k gold up right now, so might be able to work in towards a Yules or a Hex fairly soon. And Envy, what kind of builds are you going for? Seemingly still working on the Radiance right now, so 3.5k, but Speed Gaming have a lot of stalling to do. And they have no vision whatsoever. If we switch over to Speed Gaming's vision right now, uh, the gem over on the Disruptor has absolutely removed everything. They have no idea where anybody is. They have a ward just outside of their own base, but that's pretty much it. They're going to Sunstrike into Roshan to try and get a little bit of information, but... Tong Fu have actually just moved everybody bottom lane uh, to try and pick up this tier 2. They're still made, they're still on a little bit of a clock, they're not that far ahead in terms of golden experience, but um, Speed Gaming continuing to try and stall. Though it looks like this tower is going to be given away for free. And Speed Gaming, surely you have to defend your second lane of rack. Sing Sing is working on a hex, so still targeting the late game right now. Mu has a double damage, so Roshan's already dead, he just doesn't know it yet. And all Speed Gaming can do is pop out of their base, scrape to get a little bit more farm. I think this is the point where you start trying to pool all your farm on one hero to try and finish up an item, um, or maybe finish up some buybacks. Because if they can get the Radiance and they can get the hex, they're all right, but another 500 gold on AUI, say, doesn't really do a whole lot for them at this point. He has managed to pick up an Ogre Club, but that's about it. Checking back in on the pit, Roshan's about to fall, Roshan and they are going to end up giving that one to the Necrolite. Is for the living. So I guess all that's left now is for Tongfu to try and make some attempts on the high ground. So this MJ has managed to pick up a Blink Dagger on top of his four Staff. He's actually the one carrying the gem at the moment. Disruptor is working towards an Ags. And we'll have to see if Speed Gaming can, can hold this. If they can, then they're going to finish up two huge items, and then maybe they can still win this game. But it all comes down to their execution in this next fight, and Mu has just found a Hastrian. So, Dragon Knight on the hunt. They've spotted people top. Highlight Eyes TPing out. Envy going to head into the trees and also TP home. Yeah, and Speed Gaming suspecting that something is going on. Uh, are all just going to TP back and play it safe. Uh, the ping actually goes from Highlight Eye top lane. I think they want maybe an OBS and a Sentry over there, just in case... Tongfu try and loop in and around that way, but I don't think Tongfu are too interested in anything too sneaky. They're just gonna push straight up onto the high ground, and it's all on speed to see if they can hold this here. Envy 
staggering outside of the base to go and grab his relic. Well, closest he actually to the Radiance. Still a little ways off, but may as well buy items. If he gets scythed, he won't be able to buy back anyway. So a little bit of damage on the 2-3. Envy's off to the side. Kind of trapped outside of the base. He's going to be spotted out by the Rocket Flare. Immediately hookshot. Lifted as well as ZSMJ blinks in. And EE will just be brought down. Killing spree from Moo. Envy's dead. They probably just saw the relic up in his inventory as well. So, If he has a buyback, they're going to force it out of him. If he doesn't have a buyback, they're just going to take a lane of racks here. So the fact that so Envy's sneaky play to get outside of the base uh, ends up costing him. He could have just maybe looped the courier all the way around. Yes, if they lose the courier, it sucks, but better than losing your specter, I think. So Tongfu. Lift's been used for speed, just gonna keep on chipping away at the tower, they're all on full HP, Sing Sing doing his best to stall. But a really long invoke cooldown is really stopping him dropping too much, and Moo gets four staffed in on top of Sing, they're focusing on, they're gonna drop the scythe as well, just in case Kabu pops his blade mail fairly low, dodges the split earth at SMJ very low on mana. The haunt is gonna end up popping, they might be able to kill Kabu as the dagger flies in as well. But nope, not the case. Stun's gonna go out onto Envy, Kinetic Field dropped as well along with the Static Storm, he's trapped in there. Pylai Dai uses the Freezing Field for an instant, but immediately cancels. And Tongfu, keep on rolling, they glimpse back AUI, Mu doesn't have Dragon Form anymore, but it's coming up in just a second. Kabu gonna whiff another hookshot for this game. He's not been having the best time on Clockwork these last two games, but another Land of Rax on its way. 30 seconds until Envy is going to respawn, and that uh, looks like it's going to be it, probably for game two. As we, and we're actually going to have to head into a third and final game to determine who's going to advance and who will be going home. Yeah. Melee barracks down, range barracks down, range barracks down top. Speed gaming one last opportunity to fight this. Uh, I feel like we haven't seen a single convincing fight from Speed this game. It's just been a complete walkover for Tongfu. Nice two men stun from Bone. Joe drops low, but he's still got the Aegis Radiance picked up for Envy. Is this going to be enough? Dragon Tail into Pylai Die gets hit by the Split Earth as well. Nice four staff back, but not going to keep him alive. Sing Sing gets scythed up again, and that's going to be the GG called. So that wraps it up for game two of this best of three, guys. We're going to be heading back. We're going to be heading back in for game three in just a little bit. I'm a lot happier uh, that this. Okay, so stream quality, admittedly, not so great, but at least this time. It wasn't lagging. Uh, at least it wasn't lagging. So thank you guys for tuning in. I've been basically here providing coverage of the Feng Young Dota 2 battle on behalf of Beyond the Summit. Again, if you want to leave me any feedback, you can email me at basekipdota at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, it's going to wrap it up for this game, and I hope to see you for game three. It looks like somebody cancelled the GG. So it looks like Speed won a little bit of time to maybe discuss Dyer's what what went on this game, what went wrong. Um, that SMJ is going to take that as an opportunity to blink towards the fountain. But, man, the game end is, is coming up soon. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Tongfu victory!